As COVID-19 spreads and more and more new cases are detected, concern about the physical health of citizens from across the world increases. What's also on the increase is people's worry about the impact that this health crisis has had on their mental health. Sometimes I feel like we are living uh, in a strange um, movie or uh, book. I think mental health is going to be a huge topic. There will be bad consequences for their mental health for everyone. It's very unpredictable how Brazil will be handled with the corona situation. My family was very worried and would be asked to come home. I completely sympathize with people who are unable to have funerals for their loved ones. It's very unfortunate that you cannot say goodbye. We need to keep in mind that it's going to be a mental health crisis in the future. Locked up in their houses, often confined to small rooms, with a significant amount of their physical and mental activity reduced, people grow increasingly bored and restless. If I would say it's driving me insane, it wouldn't be an, an exaggeration by any means. My mental state is like going out of... I'm going crazy, basically. Like how much more can you do sitting in one space? I usually am a very organized person. I wake up at a very specific time. But right now, it's just all over the place. Wuhan city is fully locked down for two months. People just stay at home. They bought too crazy. It was strange to see our freedom just taken away in uh, one day, in one night, actually. It's ironic because I have a lot of time, and with a lot of time, you have a lot of time to think, and then, you know, with anxiety, the thinking just kind of snowballs into bigger things, and I I was supposed to get married um, in July, and right now I could have been in India, um, getting my clothes and my jewelry and everything sorted. Um, I also lost my grandmother seven weeks ago, there are some days where I just don't get out of bed until noon because I just am so unmotivated because I'm just thinking, what am I doing this for? Like, you know, but it's, it, I take one day at a time. I'm a lot better right now. Um, but it, at one point it was like, this is never going to end. There are also cases of families where they are, there's violence at home and then it's, it's hard in these situations to check what is happening, uh, who can actually get involved. That is quite concerning. As face-to-face -face conversations have been replaced by computer or phone screens, isolation and confinement has caused disconnection amongst people. I don't want to be uh, far from my family, no more. I change all my, my priorities. If I can continue working with the company, I leave the company and I go to Barcelona because I want to be close to my family. Usually we, we, we see um, people, we stay with, with, other, with other person, with uh, our uh, parents. Uh, we are far from all, all, all things, all person. My two, da my two daughters are living in Barcelona. And I'm counting how much time I will be without seeing them. And it will be six months, half a year is too much. As uncertainty mounts about how to tackle this new enemy, fear and paranoia rule in people's minds and hearts. I've noticed my wife is worried. I'm equally worried. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. A lot of people initially went into panic mode and I feel like they're still doing that because when we go out to buy groceries, everything is like, it's impossible to get bread. Maybe one day I'll not get my full pay because I'm not going to work. You know, so there's a lot of panic. We know a lot of people that has been, is now unemployed, right? They lose their jobs. The, the leaders have been preparing some kind of groceries and sending to those families so they can keep their you know family going this is going to take a while and by a while maybe months we don't know how long fear of unknown the reason we fear darkness we don't know what is going to happen as human psychology and history teaches us the fear of the unknown combined with 
ignorance and superficiality often lead to prejudices which lead to discrimination during this time some racist paradigms that seem to have been overcome have risen again some others have been revisited and twisted while others have been created from scratch if a person of asian origin would sneeze i like they would look at it do you see how people change if when adversity comes there was a case that got viral where a, a singaporean student was was uh, punched in the nose and i think he had to go undergo some facial reconstruction surgery because he was punched so hard and that was all over the news and that happened in front of us a couple of people in my social uh, groups are insinuating this is the chinese this is the fault of the chinese no there's like 30% of chinese so which is a kind of a major population so considered like a chinese virus and people were quite scared when any chinese person coughs near you like people walk away and all that so was that and then all of a sudden when this uh tablik thing when this uh 15000 you know muslim gathering happened and now almost 50% of the cases that have been uh confirmed so far are from that mass gathering as well so now it suddenly become this blame game towards you know muslims in the country the so sad actually i feel actually quite angry because before corona outbreak in italy people just accusing asians but after the outbreak in italy they just pray for italy racist people become more racist so i don't like that but i think it's going to increase furthermore this new wave of racism and discrimination also brought along a whole new wave of retaliation against this antisocial behavior it reminds us how wrong it is to judge without understanding a topic in depth and considering the facts for what they objectively are and not for which we assume they can be worry that i have is hate crime or stereotype wuhan is also victim the actually the um the victim that being um he the, the worst usa the government is trying to come cover their incompetence by scapegoating china i think the allegations are that china is downplaying the numbers the resources are taxed right now times are difficult it's not like they can keep a correct it i want people who are criticizing they can just take 10 minutes to understand to know china or know what like how can you criticize if you don't even know about them you know i have chinese friends they don't eat bats yeah people have a lot of misconceptions about that from what i've read this whole uh, wet market and exotic animals market seems to be a a very small sect of the chinese population a very small rich and powerful sect that that uh, that can afford exotic animals like that i was stop other people from eating the wild life because we know that it's not healthy as the situation of lockdown confinement and isolation is new to most people we've all been wondering what the best way to cope is very big word i'm going to use is that of acceptance the more we stay alone we tend to spend more time with our own imagination it's very important to keep a source of reality intact which means a routine something that we do daily if we are hustlers if we are people who like to th- like to have things going on a fast pace this can be used as a big opportunity to self reflect writing this scribbling whatever comes to your mind some people uh, are also on a in a rush to develop uh, a lot of new skills because we have the time so you know after this is over we should come out as a new person all of that thing is still going on in people's minds and that puts a lot of extra pressure on them the more we change the kind of language we speak to ourselves during this particular time the more helpful it can be for us religion sometimes proves to be a real solace for the human soul and in this case as well it has helped a lot of people get through this difficult period i'm really keeping positive by the the stories of goodwill that i hear about other people um i do believe in god so i think faith comes into that as well living on a faith for me is very very important and also has helped me to cope with many emotions i 
don't know if I am <laughs> if I am uh, in true or not about God, about my religion. But my religion make me feel happy. It's a way to have some hope about the future because we think that there is someone caring for us. And I connect with other people that feel the same and believe the same. Uh, that helps a lot. When the Pope hold reunion of people in a um, completely void uh, St. Peter Square with no one, people were all praying together. How to be hopeful and how to wait for better things to come. Our spirituality plays an important role in our psychology, it's true. Also here in Greece, I think, maybe it has helped a lot of people to go through it. If on the one hand there's no harm in finding comfort in your faith, on the other hand, it is also important to keep a hold on reality, of what's happening around us, and what we can do to make our conditions better. God helps those who help themselves. This particular notion, God will take care of us, is something that is dangerous. It's good to have faith, but you cannot risk your life as a test to your faith. I live in the pro in front of a church. It's a big place where a lot of people come. And I don't think it's the best thing to do right now. I don't think that going to the church is worth having more patience and more deaths. We're in the middle of Easter, which is quite a religious time here in Greece. Even in that time, people actually stayed at home. Something like this requires the cooperation of religious leaders, irrespective of what is happening in the world, what religion is going on, what festival is happening. You're supposed to unite and kind of understand this is probably not the time to do this. Don't forget that the, the religion is something individual of, of each, each person. And in these circumstances is how we need to maintain it. I think it should be something that you're talking with the people that you love, and with God, and, and finding ways to, to help. Some people have taken the situation of temporary paralysis of social and professional life to think about their own well-being, to reconsider the values they believe in, and to reflect upon what is really important to them. Everyone on his own this has decided to give up on fighting on stupid things. I start to visualize more and more what I'm going to do in the future, what I want to do in my life. I'm thinking so much about what happens next. Not being able to go outside seems like such a small issue. Um, and I also feel super thankful and humbled by the fact that something like this is happening. And then, you know, you could still keep in touch. You could still keep connected. As the health crisis caused by COVID-19 threatens to affect human beings not only on the physical side but also on the psychological side. In some cases, fear about the present has left room for uncertainty about the future in people's minds. In particular, some of the questions we've all been asking ourselves are how long are the effects of this period spent in lockdown going to last? How will a few months spent interacting with people through a screen affect face-to-face -face communication after lockdown is over? And finally, will human beings ever be able to go back to communicating as freely as they used to do before confinement? If we're getting used to being alone and talk to people through a screen, I don't know what kind of effect this is going to have to our bodies. I'm also curious to see how people are going to react when they go outside. It's something that the, the people, the feel of the of the skin need to have. If the person, the people we we meet or we would like to meet is not so close to us, I think that the approach might be more precautious. And you really can distinguish between the people you want in your life from the people you don't want in your life anymore. And that also gives, gives people an opportunity to really think what what to make out of their time, what is something they've always wanted to do. Because of the whole uh, lockdown, I've lost my social skills. I can't make eye contact. Like, I'm not confident anymore. I've... There will be a lot of hesitation, at least on my personal behalf, because I 
think I would still be a little bit afraid to contract the virus unless I have a vaccine. Of course, we don't hug and we don't come very close. So it's quite odd and weird on how to say hello. We should try to distinguish between fear and uh, like panic is a problem when you put yourself in a, in a cage you don't really want. It would probably be relief and not discomfort when we first see somebody else in front of us. I think it will just be like, thank God there is somebody else who is just like me. People are still out there, you know, we are like across the street or the next door. We tend to forget that when we talk through a screen. I think it helps when people are honest and they talk about it and they don't think it's something strange or weird. It's important for people to reach out in any way they can. And that means also for the healthcare system to be open. I guess also be patient with something you might believe that it seems weird or strange to you. You're not sure how, what the person you have across you, um, what had happened to them during the quarantine. Humanity in a way has its, even in the worst times or in adverse conditions, always manages to spring back. It's important to be, to become a little bit more optimistic and think big, have dreams, even though they seem non-existent at the moment, but I think it's important to dream big.